Uh, we put the question out there, Mary and Preston. What can be done to stop destructive protests before they start? And should the response change if crimes are committed anyway? The property damage began almost the moment these protesters headed through downtown Seattle. Police say the anonymity gained by nearly everyone wearing black makes it hard for officers to arrest the individuals committing crimes. Legal analyst Scott Lindsay says there are other tools available. It would be easier prosecutions to deter this repeat violence committed by black bloc is those obstruction, resisting arrest cases, failure to disperse cases. Once police see criminal activity, they can order protesters to disperse. And if they refuse to leave, potentially arrest them for low-level offenses like pedestrian interference or obstruction. The missing ingredient, though, and the reason that the police aren't making more of those arrests to stop this night-after-night -night violence is because the city attorney's office, for the most part, is refusing to actually file those charges. More serious cases, like the vandalism and burglary at the Starbucks and Pike Place Market, end up with King County Prosecutor Dan Satterberg, and his office is filing charges. You know, we don't want people to think that they can get away with this blatant violence in, in Seattle or anywhere in the county. Few of these demonstrations that turn destructive ever seek a city permit. ABC News analyst Brad Garrett says our society gives free speech and assembly a lot of latitude. And there are real dilemmas in stopping a demonstration just because it has no permit. Clearly, the line has to be drawn once they start breaking the law. So it's, it's not an easy call. Businesses around here say they are exhausted. They are fed up with the damage done, and they say they feel abandoned by the city and its leaders. In many ways, they, they feel abandoned. Uh, they need our city leaders to be speaking out on their behalf and to condemn these actions. It's a call to action and a call for Seattle city leaders to step up and help businesses big and small hit hard by vandals. Last night, vandals busted the windows of the original Starbucks and Pike Place Market. The Amazon Go store on 5th and Marion was also targeted. It's not clear what their message is, so you don't quite know what to make of it. They need to arrest these people. When people think they can get away with this, Without any consequences, they're going to keep doing it. Dorley Gaffney owns the soapbox in Pike Place Market. She says she feels violated and defenseless because of the damage done to neighboring businesses by vandals. Not hurting anybody but us as small business owners. In Seattle, we need to end the uncivil war that has raged and allowed extremists to come in and destroy property. So this is expensive. It's disruptive to their operation. It's not helping them get back on their feet. We need our city leaders speaking out today. Downtown Seattle Association, Visit Seattle and Pike Place Market today say enough is enough. We're asking our elected officials from the council, the mayor to the city attorney, each of them today should be speaking out on this, should be saying this has no place in Seattle. It is just uh, inexcusable. And I think uh, in this city especially, uh, which we protect civil rights fiercely, uh, destruction and violence uh, and even hate speech just really have no place in this city. I'm concerned because I think we know that the pandemic and recovery to this industry in this city is gonna be years in the making and this does not help. Hey Mary, this is all going to be happening on Sunday morning at Amazon's 7th Avenue Meeting Center. Amazon is partnering with Virginia Mason, which will provide the staffing and the supplies for that clinic. And if you want a shot at getting a shot, you'll have to meet either those phase 1A or 1B requirements. And on top of that, you'll have to put your name down on a wait list. Teaming up with Washington State, Amazon is aiming to get 2,000 COVID-19 vaccinations into the arms of those anxiously waiting. Virginia Mason also playing a pivotal role with the hopes of this being just the first. So we're looking forward to many more large-scale vaccination events in the coming weeks. To secure a potential spot, you'll have to hop on Virginia Mason's online wait list. Anyone 65 or older or 50 and older living in a multi-generational household is eligible. This comes as Governor Jay Inslee announces a new vaccination goal, looking to remedy what's been a slow rollout. Look, if we're going to do 45,000 doses a day, we need the federal government to uh, triple at least what their production is. 
So far, of the more than 829,000 doses delivered here, just 362,000 have been given, or 43.6%. Each week, the state will determine what it expects to receive, make decisions to maximize vaccination efforts, and then move those doses to vaccination sites and providers. Please stay in touch with your health care provider. Please stay in touch with your clinic. Please stay in touch with your hospital. Mary, we've been getting a lot of concerns about people who are struggling to find COVID-19 vaccines or appointments booking up within just a few hours of opening up. And counties are working hard to set up these massive sites, but they also don't have the supply yet. In King County, the Showair Center in Kent could be a future COVID-19 mass vaccination site. If the city and King County strike a deal in the next few days, 500 people can be vaccinated daily. There's also discussions about mass vaccination sites in South King County. In Pierce County, officials say three sites will have mass vaccination events next week, but those sites haven't been confirmed yet. Up to eight mobile vaccination sites and vaccine drop teams are also in the works. The goal is to administer 4,600 vaccines each day. In Snohomish County, three drive through COVID-19 vaccination sites are already up and running at the Evergreen State Fairgrounds, Painfield, and Edmonds College. The drive through sites have capacity to administer 30,000 vaccines per week, and the goal is to ramp up to 50,000 vaccines per week. The bottom line is we need more vaccines for our drive through sites. Uh, I am frustrated and find it frustrating that we're having to fight for uh, extra doses each week. If the vaccines come in at a trickle or at a flood, Pierce County will be ready either way. So we can match up what we do receive to this multifaceted plan. Hey everybody, I'm Eric Johnson from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and all of Western Washington. And don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.